Wall Street, the nation's financial center. Madison Avenue, advertising capital of the United States. Boston's Route 128. Silicon Valley, hotbeds of American technology. And Southern California, entertainment center of the world. From these and other important locations throughout North America, Chesney Communications presents Window on Wall Street. Welcome to Window on Wall Street. I'm Bob Chesney, and joining us today is a, really a pro in the field of Internet marketing, Ed Taylor, Internet uh, Marketing Group. Ed, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Ed, this is sort of a surprise visit because uh, normally uh, you... You know, up there in Oregon, we don't see that much of you, but you're in town doing a seminar, and I thought, what a great opportunity to come and hear more about what you're doing, but most importantly, how people who are watching or listening to this can actually get more mileage out of their Internet site. Yeah. You know that old saying, build it and they will come? <laughs> no, that's a fact. Uh, Let's talk about why people are benefiting from this kind of marketing advice that you're giving from the platform in your seminars and in your business. Okay, um, you know what we did, Bob. In fact, uh, you know what I would like to do, if it's okay, is give you just a little bit more of a background. Please. I mean, because I know that you know, but I'm not sure that that some of the other people know exactly how how I started in this. I think it's a bit interesting. Um, what I did is I went out uh, for years. I was a seminar promoter, so we went out and promoted seminars for Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and Deepak Chopra and all those people all over the country. And that was the business we were in. Well, about six or seven years ago, I started looking at the Internet, saying, this is going to be the next hot topic. I had no idea it was going to be as hot as it's actually turned out to be. But, but it, it just I knew intuitively that this was going to be a great tool. So I went up to, I was in San Diego at the time, I went up to Silicon Valley and started interviewing everybody I could find on Internet, how to use the Internet as a business tool. In that process, what I did is I found some people that were incredibly smart. I took them down and put them in front of audiences. We did seminars all over Southern California. And what I found real quick was that these guys were great, very, very knowledgeable, but you'd put them in front of an audience and it was kind of like a hypnotist, you know. It was <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, the audience is dropping like flies. Of course, because the people, as smart as they were and, and as knowledgeable as they were, they were not the greatest presenters. So they were talking about all this, these techno terms and, and the audience would just kind of get lulled to sleep in the process. I had a guy come up to me at one of these seminars and said, Ed, why don't you interview these experts, figure out what it is that they know, and just get up there and tell us what we should be doing. Exactly. And that's what started all this. So I went out from that point and just started interviewing these experts to determine what it was that they knew. And that has become, initially it was a newsletter. Started sending the newsletter out to people, and people started applying to stuff and sending me emails back saying, Hey, Ed, I, we took this idea that you told us about in the newsletter, and here's what's happened. We had a $12,000 day at our website. Or, I know well, I learned a new idea from a woman I interviewed down in San Diego. This was seven years ago now, and she talked to me about news groups. I thought, What is a news group? Never even heard of a news group prior to that. And so I, I went out and I found these news groups. I had a $10,000 day marketing my services to news groups. Something I love this. I mean this is this is fun stuff. Now, so that's what spawned all this early on. Now Ed, I've been privileged to be in your audience on a couple of occasions to yes. hear you speak and you really bring the topic alive. So that's a lot of what you do is actually go out and address groups. Uh, but what makes it interesting is you come from a marketing perspective. Right. You, you don't talk about how to make flash sizzle. You talk about how to ring up the cash register, and that's a much better sound. That's absolutely right. I found real early on that the people that I worked with primarily weren't interested in the technology or the, you know, like you say, the, the, the sizzle so much of the website is what is this thing going to do for me? And for us, I mean, our clients have evolved into... Uh, a large spectrum, but primarily they're business to business companies, not so much. And we have some consumer sites that we work with, but mainly business to business. The focus is primarily generating leads. So they say, you know, what can we do with this technology to get somebody, one, to visit our website, two, once they get there to, to recognize that we have something of value, and three, identify themselves and say, hey, I'm interested in whatever it is that you have. And so we can turn that lead over to our sales department. And we've really 
focused on developing some techniques and some strategies to implement or to, to, to create that sort of a, a goal and to accomplish that kind of an objective for our clients. And fortunately, it's, it, it's worked well. We've done real well with that. Now, something that was discussed in one of your recent seminars was the difference between yelling on a website, <laughs> telling on a website, and selling. Right. Uh, let me get your perspective on that. Yours are selling websites. Absolutely. And, and the selling might be something as simple, Bob, as uh, asking someone to submit a resume. I mean, so it's not when we say selling, we don't necessarily mean that it's... Ka-ching. Yeah, exactly. Not e-commerce necessarily, but we want to produce a meaningful business result. And, you know, what we don't want to do is go out there, like you've suggested, and just blast out a, a tremendous amount of information. What we want to do is, in fact, what we do is what we call reverse engineer. We design the form, the form first. We say, what form would we like someone to fill out in this process? We look at the form, and then we, we stand back and say, in order to, ask, to, to get someone to fill out this form, what would be required from the, the information side? How much information is necessary to ask you to fill out this form? And here's the trick. Most websites give you way too much information. The, we've all heard the saying of the salesperson who talked himself <laughs> past the sale. How many websites have you been to that have done exactly that? They've, they've provided so much information that when you get through reading everything, you say, I'm done. I've seen all I need to see. So what we suggest is that you design the form. You look at then and say, okay, we need to provide this information, and this is the syntax. This is the order that we want to provide the information. Again, it's like a sales presentation. You know, I was a sales manager for many, many years, and when you launched a new prod product, you would decide you know, what information is necessary to convince this prospective buyer to buy this, this product. And, you know, and a website is virtually the same process, but again, most websites are developed by uh, people whose background is primarily either graphics or programming, so they don't really bring that marketing and that, that sales process to the project. And uh, it can be costly. You know? And another key element to your business success is your ability to communicate with the client. And I'm sure every person watching this has had some experience trying to talk technobabble uh, with a, a very highly skilled, uh, if you will, artist. <laughs> artist would be a better word. That's right. <laughs> How important is that communication skill that you have to really get to what the client needs and wants? I think it's crucial, Bob. I mean, uh, for us, what we've done, you know, we've been doing this now for a lot of years, um, but we've developed some systems that, that we really uh, and employ to not just impress you with with the the look of the site or the the feel because it's so easy to do that to to put your picture on there and your logo and and, and on the company. and spin the logo yeah first. yeah, oh yeah we, <laughs> and then you're going to feel great about that but, but again our hope is and our goal is with our clients that we're going to have a long term relationship we're a marketing company and what that means is I want to have an ongoing monthly continuity marketing relationship with you. In order for us to have that long-term relationship, I need on a monthly basis to produce results for you. Otherwise, you're going to get to a point and say, look, you know, I have this wonderful website and it's terrific, but so what? What's it doing for me? I want to show you every month a certain number of sales, a certain number of leads. And, and that is really, like you've suggested, it's, a, it's this, this ability not only to communicate um, a vision, but to com communicate really this goal, and then to have that, that goal accomplished in the process. And I, and I think that we have really stayed focused on that from day one, and I do think that distinguishes uh, our services from a lot of other web development companies around the country. Now, where you're located, you obviously have some skilled technicians working sure. with you, but the key is it's a one-stop shop, am I correct, Ed? Absolutely. When they're, when they're talking about their particular site, they're talking to Ed Taylor. Absolutely. We, uh, you know, the, the, we've lived in San Diego for a lot of years, loved it down there, but we vacationed up to Ashland, Oregon. Small little town right over the southern border, or southern border of, of the uh, Oregon border, and it's just a quaint little town that we love. There's a university there, wonderful 
environment to raise a family and to, uh, and to live. So we moved there about uh, five years ago now, and it's just been a terrific you know, location for us. And I found that there's this huge number of other, you know, Southern California refugees that are that are also there, uh, and also the student population. So we've been able to build a, a wonderful core group in our company. Um, but as you mentioned, I run around the country speaking a lot, so we bring clients in from all over the country, and we're able not only to develop their websites, but to implement these marketing plans. And it really doesn't matter of course, where we are, we can be anywhere in the world. If FedEx or UPS delivers, <laughs> that's exactly right, and certainly email. And we uh, and we're you know it, again, it just really doesn't matter. The most difficult part, I do somewhere between a hundred and two hundred speaking engagements a year, and so the the air travel is a little tough out of Southern Oregon. But but other than that, um, it's just been a wonderful experience for us to live in that small community. And I want to turn the page for a second because one of the frustrations that CEOs have and executives of companies is they've got a website, but it's like the great Wanamaker said, uh, only half my advertising works. I don't know which half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they get just enough business to to make them feel like it's working, but yet they know so much is falling through the cracks. Right. What advice would you have for these people? Well, uh, what we do is we monitor the results that's going on with their website. See, the, the beauty of all things internet relative to direct marketing uh, via postal mail is you can track the traffic at the site. I, you know, I love this. I mean, my background when we were promoting seminars and my prior to that, my other marketing background, of course, was primarily related to space advertising and direct mail and radio spots and so on. Well, with the internet now, we can see how many people visit each page of the site and where, where they came into the site, where they exited the site. If we have an e-commerce site, how many shopping carts were abandoned. So people start putting stuff in their cart and then they left wow. before they checked out. Not good. No, that's <laughs> right. But we have this ability now to, to be able to track this, this progress of a, of a buyer, of a web visitor, and see what track they went through the website. Now, if we identify on page six that a lot of people seem to be leaving the site, what do we do? See, we go back in and we fix that. We have this ability now to fix it. Well, in direct marketing, if you send out a brochure, you know you get a half a percent response or whatever that number is, but you don't know where you missed the market. With the website, you do. Mm -hmm. So we have this ability over time to, to, to actually adjust the site to make it produce better results. So it's a, it's a huge, huge advantage. Now, a lot of our listeners have been to seminars, Ed, and they are hearing these buzzwords like viral marketing. Yes. They're hearing about affiliates. They're hearing about uh, click-throughs. And uh, where can they go? Uh, is this a service that you provide that help them use these new tools? Well, yes. Uh, we help them use the new tools, but more importantly, I think we, we help them uh, uh, to identify which of these new tools make sense, if any. So some of this stuff, like I say, they are new buzzwords, and, and some of the stuff is effective, and, and some of it just isn't. I mean, it's somebody with a hot idea, and they know that there's a, a market out there that we can go try to sell this to it with hopes that it'll work. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we don't usually do that. We're, we're a little bit more standoffish. I don't really want to pioneer too much. Something I mean, about arrows in the <laughs> that, That's right. I will let somebody else pioneer some of this stuff, and then we'll take our clients down the path, of, of getting these results once the the path has been beaten down a little bit so we don't we don't recommend doing a lot of the development stuff but what we do recommend and something that that I think is very very important and I think would be very useful to anybody who's who's watching this and that is we suggest that every website have what we call a poll component that is it's something that's going to cause people to visit the site like in our case uh, I know that most of our target market they're interested in marketing. I mean, that's what we provide. Those are our services. So they're interested in that or they're not in our market. So what I did is I created a report called the 10 Fatal Flaws of Internet Marketers. Every time I do a radio program, every time I do a seminar, even something here, I'm going to suggest that if go to our website and get this white paper, the 10 Fatal Flaws of Internet Marketers. You and I can talk about all the things that we can do right to build more traffic to a website, but we've written this paper that will tell you what not to do, the mistakes that people make. Well, 
Everybody can do that. Every single company can have a website on uh, some, or have a pull component at their website that will cause people to want to visit their site to get this information. And that's absolutely crucial. Um, you know, every other type of advertising is intrusive. You run an ad on the radio, boom, it's just in your face, kind of, or uh, direct mail pieces in your hands. Your website, I can tell you all day long about how wonderful my website is, but you're not seeing it. The only reason you're going to go there is if you perceive that there's some value at my website that you want, and that is usually information oriented. And it's something, what I found is that the negative, you know, the mistakes, what not to do, usually will cause people to visit the site um, more frequently or, or it cause more people to visit the site than something on the positive side. And, and, and forgive me for interrupting me, but I got to have that report. <laughs> and I know a lot of people listening and watching do as well. How do you get this report? Well, just go to our website, www.internetmarketinggroup.com. And, um, and there's a big button on there that says click here for the free report. And now you'll notice this is another great idea, Bob. What we do, of course, is you could click on that button and, and just get the report, right? I could say click here, get your free white paper on internet marketing mistakes or the fatal flaws, and then there it would be. Of course, that's not what I want to do. See, what I want to do is I want to build a database. I want the people who are visiting my site to let me know that they're visiting so we can send them out other emails. So what we do is we take you to then to a form and ask you to fill out the form. Of course, we give enough sales uh, presentation to make people comfortable. One of the things that is a, is a must is to have people feel confident at your site, that you're not going to abuse the information that they entrust in you. So we want to establish that real firm foundation of trust. But once we have that, people will fill the form out. Now you come to my site, you fill out the form, I provide the information. All this is done automatically. I don't have to touch anything. It's all ad, you know, just done via the, the web. Um, but now I have this ability to send you an email a week from now or a month from now announcing perhaps one of my seminars or a newsletter or another product. Um, and, and that's just the beauty of using this technology today. It's just absolutely wonderful. Ed, one of the uh, key phrases we talked about earlier was the difference between yelling, telling, and selling, and nothing sells like a testimonial. Right. I guarantee if I were coming to Oregon and I wanted a great restaurant, the last place I'd go is to the paper or to the classified or yellow pages. I'd come to someone like you and say, Ed, you look like you know a good meal. <laughs> That's where, right. where do I eat? And I could certainly direct you in the right direction. So there's nothing like word of mouth. How do you build the concept of WOM, word of mouth, into your websites? Well, I'll tell you, I love the use of testimonials exactly like you suggest. Um, the in fact, I, I have my, my testimonial uh, book. I can carry this around and I show it to people at our seminars. Um, because what I suggest that every company do is take these letters of testimony. If you get them and if you don't get them, I, I guess I think you ought to uh, <laughs> try to provide a little better customer <laughs> service or something. I mean, you know, you should be getting, if you're doing a decent job, I know that you have letters on your wall and everything. We all get these letters from people saying, hey, you've done a terrific job for us. We need to share those. And one of the great ways to do that is to, um, to put those up at the website. You know, just an example, Bob, I mean, I have for our, for our speaking engagement, I, I've broken all of our testimonials down into different uh, types. We have our audits, which is a service that we provide for our clients, somebody who already has a website. We'll go look at their website and, and tell them what's, you know, what can be fixed and how to best go about fixing it. And that, you know, that's one of our products, one of our initial products. So I, I have these, these testimonials that, that have said, hey, the, the, you know, thanks for the help in, in your audit. The, the information has been really useful. Then we go into, um, to, I don't have my glasses on. What does that say there? Um, consulting. So, you know, obviously one of the things we do is consulting. So you can go back and look at the, all of our letters that we have in consulting. So we post these at the website. Look at this. What's the date on that? 1996. It's like you've been around a while. You know, so that was one of the first consulting letters I used. This is from a, an organization named Genie. Um, you know, so we have, we have these letters that, that we receive. Then the others on our website development. I mean, here's uh, you know uh, one just real recent uh, from July of this or July of 2001, July of last year that uh, 
talks about our development of our different websites. Here's one that you'll recognize. Uh, J.F. Hennig, past right. president of the National Speakers Association. We were involved in his website. Um, and several, several others. We have a book. This one I love. What's, what's this one say here? We have 50... What's that? $53,700 in, in unexpected income. Yeah, see, I love that. I mean, so sort of takes care of your fee plus. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, so again, we, we get these kind of letters. We put them up on our website to help demonstrate the, what we're capable of doing for our clients. Now, what we found recently, Bob, and this is a, a relatively new development, is we're getting more and more of our clients to, that have asked us not to tell in our newsletters other places what we're doing and how we're doing it and the results that they're getting. I used to provide case studies in our newsletter and again now from just a competitive standpoint people are saying hey I, I don't want to share that information anymore. Yeah. So so I, you know at first I was kind of disappointed thinking you know well that that's that's our lifeblood. I mean that's how we develop business by telling people this is what we're doing for that guy. But uh, you know at, at this point I think we're pretty secure business wise. But it is interesting to see the competitive nature um, and, and now that people are just really seeing these results being produced and they don't want to share anymore. Well, you know, it, first of all, it's good ethics as well because, for example, we've done that forever with Window on Wall Street. We might do a project with a web designer mm -hmm. and another web designer might say, well, gee, you did that for Ed Taylor. Let me, uh, you know, uh, no, that's, right. that, that, that's proprietary information. Very good. So the, the, now, uh, one of the interesting developments out there, Ed, with testimonials is you're integrating them in more than print into the websites and the extension of your websites into CD-ROM. Can you talk more about how you're doing that? Well, Bob, you know, that's exactly why I'm here visiting with you today. I had a few minutes in between uh, my, a seminar that I'm doing and a flight that, that I was on, and I wanted to talk to you because of all the video work you've done. You know, I've known you... Uh, I don't know, it must be 10 years at least at now. At least, yeah. And, uh, and we, I know we've had a chance to work together on several occasions. And as you know, the video, in fact, that's up at our uh, website right now, you shot and you've helped do the editing on. Um, so one of the things that I really wanted to do today was to come down and do to talk to you more about what we can do to integrate this video capability that you have here into marketing some of our clients' websites. I know the last time that I asked you to speak at one of the uh, seminars that I was uh, involved in, you had mentioned the use of this blue screen, I think you called it, technology, where you can really significantly reduce the production cost of these videos and 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 have this incredible quality. And I and I want to also just commend you. I mean, you had great reviews from the people at that seminar well, you. when you came in and, and showed them how to apply this technology. Well, the basic message that we shared was simply take your five best customers, the ones who you would love to replicate, right. and have them professionally interviewed, preferably at their place of business, but if they're in Southern California or you can get them in a car in our Irvine studio because we are sitting right now in front of a green screen. Right. There, there is no graphic there. <laughs> it's electronically can, you know, superimposed. So that allows a professional interviewer to ask them not only about your relationship but about the results that they've had, what it's like working with you, why they chose you right. uh, versus competition, uh, about the time that you walked on water for them and, 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 and worked miracles. So what you're getting is more than just a little sappy uh, three-word line, you know, he's good. You know. <laughs> what you really want is depth and, and, and substance. So that was my message is get that done, whether right. you use us or whether you use somebody in your hometown. But you want to do it professionally because, right. number one, this is your best customer. <laughs> you right. have five best customers. They've got to look good. They've got to sound good. So you don't want to go in there with an amateur uh, without lights and things. Right. Secondly, you don't want to take in the, uh, the CBS film crew with you. Right. You don't want a truck pulling up in front of the company because most of them have non-disclosure 
policies mm -hmm. uh, in, in which they can't endorse someone. Right. So all of a sudden you're bringing in a, a director, three cameramen, a lighting crew, a sound guy, and everybody's saying, what's going on? Well, plus I, I would think that'd be a little intimidating anyway. Oh, exactly. <laughs> now, while I've got you on camera, tell them that. You know. yeah. <laughs> so what you really want is someone who can actually work uh, in, in almost below the radar. They right. come in professionally in the office, close the door, set up the lights, and come away with a really good in-depth interview. And by the way, this only takes about 15 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes if, you know, it, it goes on and on. Uh, the second idea I shared with your people was you, you want to take that testimonial and build it into a story about them, not, not about you. In right. other words, so uh, as the piece is put together, you want to say, uh, in talking with XYZ Company, they're a world leader in ceramic engineering. Uh, the company dominates the market with clients like, so you want to puff them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want to do that is because then when you use that uh, endorsement or that enthusiastic endorsement, they're going to want to pass that around to their friends, right. colleagues, association members, and so forth. And guess what that means? Right. More people calling you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you just go in there and just grab the testimonial, that's fine. But what you really want to do is build them up. Well, you know, the other thing that you mentioned in my program that I just thought was um, just so absolutely timely was use now of these CDs to help distribute the message. And this has been something that I've been talking about for probably a year or so. Um, we've seen how AOL has built a whole business out of the distribution of CDs. And, and how many CD-ROMs does everyone watching probably have tucked away of AOL? They probably got version <laughs> two CD-ROMs. You can't throw them away. No, it's, it's funny. It, I, I was in a, uh, a program. I, I did a talk for a group of CEOs back in North Carolina. One of the guys was a research scientist, and, uh, and he says, "You know what we're doing with all the a with all the AOL CDs we're getting." And, Everybody in the group said, no, we don't have a clue. They suspend them from, with, with a fishing line into the chicken cages and, and, and let the chickens peck on them. And apparently it, can, it, it causes the chickens to not pick their own feathers. It gives them something to amuse themselves. So I, I thought AOL would probably get a kick out of that. That's great. But if I know AOL, they're probably converting them into some kind of clients. <laughs> but, but you hit on a really key point, Ed, because when you think about, for example, a trade show, mm -hmm. in the olden days, when you went to a trade show, you had developed these great muscles carrying around all the literature they gave you. Well, now they don't do that. They swipe your card right. and then they mail you right. tons of literature. Right. Now it's so easy to hand somebody a CD-ROM that's got not only your website on it, right. but it's got up to 60 minutes of broadcast quality video, all push-button oriented. So for example, you're at a trade show and you're trying to put on this demonstration of your product maybe they see it maybe they don't yes. now it's on the cd-rom right. secondly you've got your chief technical officer this is a person who when you put them in front of a whiteboard you can just hear the music playing in the background <laughs> i mean they make a whiteboard talk now you can capture them forever so uh, for example in a sales presentation instead of drapesing in your whole team you click a button and there's your chief technical officer doing the rams and roms and the bits and bytes. Exactly. You've got your financial officer talking about the financial stability of your organization or your company uh, with their PowerPoint slides and graphs and <laughs> charts and so forth. So the idea of carrying all these people of your company and your organization and putting them all neatly on a CD-ROM. You know, and, and then and here's the next step and this is where the, our two things integrate and that is you know, everybody asks me when, when they talk about the website promotion, the marketing, how do I best do that? And of course, I want to convey the use of the website, certainly, but mainly, again, it comes back to producing that result, whatever that result is, that inquiry, that lead, that sale. So now we have the ability to take the video to really create this incredibly compelling presentation with no bandwidth concerns. We don't care if they're on a telephone dial-up or a cable modem, it doesn't matter because it's being generated off the CD. But now the, the beauty of this is that, it, that if you're watching the CD, we can then say click here to place an order or if you'd like more information or you want this free white paper, click here. And they can actually go right to the website it, right, we can generate a window, open up a browser, go right to the website where they can create or get whatever it is that we're asking them or that we're talking about in, in the interview on the CD. And if you just looked at one teeny segment of the market, people who use laptops, mm -hmm. I mean, get on an airplane and count how many people oh. have laptops. When those things fire up, it's magic. 
all these people are working on their laptops, could be using your CD-ROM without going online. Yeah. And then That's when they're beautiful. ready to buy something, do business with you, they just click on and you're online and you're ready to buy it. I love it. It's I a just, perfect I, marriage. I Web, think it's great. CD-ROM. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and uh, there may be a day at some point in time where we're broadcasting all this video uh, without the use of the CD. Right. You, can, you can use these CDs. It just is a great, great tool. And there's... In, in my mind, like you mentioned earlier, the, the, the ability to convey with, with the picture, with the video, is so much more powerful than just those written words. In the seminars that I do, at every seminar we talk about the creation of compelling content. This taking people through the process of reading a website. I ask every audience that I speak to, when you were, if you were to rate your content, your own content of your website, how would it rate between you know, a 1 and 10, 1 being absolutely boring and 10 being absolutely riveting? Never is it above a 5. I mean, people just don't feel good about their content at their website. They know they're not writers. They're certainly not copywriters from the sales or marketing perspective. Most of the time, if, if, when I'm interviewing you or you are interviewing me, uh, we convey so much more enthusiasm. I mean, one, we like what we're doing and it, and it comes across. Um, but boy, to, to ask either of us to sit down and write that, would, it would just lose so much in the translation. So that's what I love about the, uh, the video and the use of the CD. And everybody watching or listening can use the technology. Absolutely. You mentioned the blue screen. For example, um, l let's say you've got uh, in your company what I call the best splainer. Uh, it's supposed to be explainer, but they just explain stuff to where you understand it. Right. Well, all they need to do is literally come into the studio, no matter where they're located, because we're across the street from the John Wayne Airport, right. bring that product with them, and in the blue screen, we can actually put them right on the floor of their factory, right in the middle of anywhere they want to be using the blue screen technology. They can make a presentation, and it's captured forever. The best presenter the company has right then and there and they can explain the intricacies of how it works uh, how the buttons are connected all in one fell swoop in less than an hour i mean this whole process of you and i less than an hour and we're all done now you you showed us some video clips at that seminar that we that you came in and spoke to can you add some of that onto this cd that we're creating now oh in fact what we'll do uh, ed is we'll make a special cd available that just has a zillion different examples oh, uh, and as a matter of fact we have two cds one that talks about marketing uses let me say that again. It's easy for <laughs> these are rented. One CD that has marketing applications, uh -huh. and the other CD that has training uh, applications. Oh, now, when you say training, everybody starts thinking, "Oh my God, Army Training Film 101." <laughs> no, what these really are are expert systems, Ed, where you take someone in your organization who does something so well, but they don't know how they do it. So, if you ask them to write it out, they'd say, "I just, I just do it." Right. Well, all you do is you capture it. Uh, and you can do this, by the way, yourself. Send us the tape. We get it transcribed using Dragon. Uh -huh. And then we look at that person and we say, you know, they're really good at what they do, but they're probably not a great presenter. Right. So we can then recast an actor who looks just like them. <laughs> using the blue screen, it can be professionally produced. So what you've done is a brain drain. You've yes. taken your best people, you've captured them, and you've also got the written documentation of that process that they want. That's a great Now, idea. here's the bad news. Somebody may look at the process and say, yikes, <laughs> is that the way they do it? <laughs> well, that's a heck of a good time to fix it right. and make sure it's right so that when you do record it, you've got it forever. Yeah. But there's just nothing that you can't accomplish with the technology. And the best part is, it's all done in less than an hour. That's great. Uh, and again, as we're getting right at 11 o'clock, and you arrived at yes, 10, yes. but we did spend some time chatting and drinking <laughs> coffee. <laughs> yes, so I think it's a great time to really uh, summarize what we've talked about, Ed, uh, and that is you've got a business and service that takes people, A, educates them to how to make money on the Internet. Right. Secondly, you've got a service that actually takes them through the process of auditing what they have, and I hear this all the time from CEOs and executives. My website, well, I don't want to use it. <laughs> you know the word. Yes. You're able to go in there and find out why it does that and how to make it better. Right. And then thirdly, you can take and actually create it from scratch, but make sure that they get the results. Exactly. What we normally do, the, the process, Bob, is if you have a website, we will audit that site and tell you how to fix it. So it's not just beating it up. I mean, that's easy. 
but also the, the fixes. And then we will implement those fixes if you like. But a lot of people have web development teams in-house or they've outsourced that they're very comfortable with. So, they, But the people aren't the greatest marketers. So we help adjust and, and, and address all those marketing issues that are then fixed. So we say then once your site is brought into compliance with these marketing standards, now we need to work on really marketing it. So our company will first get all your pages optimized for the search engines. And I mean all your pages. Uh, very often we see the uh, home page is optimized for the search engines, uh, but that's just not nearly good enough. I mean, you have all these other words you want people to to search on to find your products and find your services. So we, we build multiple what we call entry pages. Get all those out to all the search engines. But you look at it and say, well, that, that's great, but that's not nearly enough either. So beyond that, we say, you know, we want to make sure that, that we have the site designed in a way that incorporates the use of this pull component so that we, we can we get some leverage out there from the media. I, right before I walked in here, I just hung up uh, with a client that we're putting a news release out to invite people to come to their site to use a what we're calling an ROI calculator, a return on investment calculator for the travel incentive business. So we've created that to pull people to the site. Now we're putting a news release out to get all these this target market to visit the site to use this tool. So that pull component's an important concept. We also put together uh, email marketing campaigns. Again, we monitor the sites and translate what we see at the site um, into some meaningful information that we can uh, we can use to fix and enhance the site and increase the conversion rate at the site. So we have a full spectrum of marketing services that we build into our, our client work. And then, of course, the other thing that I do and I just love to do is, is run around doing the speaking engagements around the country. I, I have to comment, though, Ed, and it's a compliment, really. You've used one technical term in our entire discussion, it was optimized. <laughs> Talk to any other web designer and you'll hear flash and rollovers and uh, uh, hot spots and, and everything else. It's all about marketing. It's not about technology. Exactly right. I have the guys in the office who now have been so indoctrinated into my marketing mindset. And I still have to hold the reins in because they get <laughs> awful excited with, with the new version of Flash or you know all these things. And, 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 and this stuff is cool. I mean, you know, they, they show me and I, wow, I mean, that is so neat. But we, you know, we let's back up, what's the objective here and how do we best accomplish that objective without locking up the guy's computer on the other side, you know? Well, Ed Taylor, I want to thank you for dropping by the studio and having this chance again to chat with you about your business. And let me remind the viewers that if you would like Ed's free report, the website address will repeat it for you. And if you'd like uh, either of the two CDs or both of them that we were talking about on how to build your marketing without adding salespeople or how to improve your training uh, through our training resources, uh, the websites are on the screen at www.internetmarketinggroup.com. Thanks again for joining us for Window on Wall Street. I'm Bob Chesney, and my guest has been Ed Taylor. Thank you, Bob.